Joe's. We're looking forward to God working and moving in our service tonight. Brother Joe is going to be preaching for us this evening, so we're looking forward to it and excited about what God can do in our hearts. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and ask uh, the Lord's blessing on the service. Dearly Father, Lord, we're excited about what you can do in our lives. Lord, I pray as we talk about this morning that we would be seeking your blessing. And Lord, that we're searching for your power. And Lord, we're thankful that you are a friend that is very patient with us. I know you've been patient with me over the years, and I'm very thankful for that. And Lord, many times in the Bible, you showed us how you were patient with Peter, even patient with uh, uh, Judas, and even how you teach us. You teach unlike any other. Talk about the object lesson about the whale and swallowing Jonah. What a great way to teach Jonah. And Lord, there's been things you brought into our lives that we, uh, that we need to learn. And many times we choose to be hard-headed, and Lord, we choose not to learn quickly. And Lord, I pray tonight we have an open heart, seeking your will, seeking your blessing, and seeking that you would teach us or do those things you want us to know. And Lord, that we would be willing and have the courage to say, yes, Lord, whatever you want, I'm willing to do. And not just follow through for one day or for one hour, but decisions that will make a difference for eternity. God, I pray you help Brother Joe as he preaches, help Brother Jim as he leads the music, help the choir as they sing, help the special music, help everything that happens here tonight be something that brings you honor and glory, and Lord, that we would learn what you're trying to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's go ahead and stand together as Brother Jim comes to lead us in our theme song and also our first congregational song. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. First song is not in your hymnals again, but we're going to sing Since the Savior Found Me. Since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sin, I have had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrow of the past. They're underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. Saved, 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 I know he's mighty tower. Saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Good singing. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. Saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save the save the save, I love him more each day. Save the save the save, I know he's mighty tower. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Last verse. Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day. When he shall come to catch his waiting bride away. Save, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know he's mighty tower. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Maybe seated.
next song is Let the Lower Lights Be Burning. If you want to use your hymnal, you can turn to 355. 355. I'm going to sing the first verse and the third verse. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Last verse. Trim your feeble lamp, my brother. Some poor sailor, tempest tossed, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman. You may rescue, you may save. Amen. Welcome to Faith Baptist Church again. Uh, let's see here. A couple of announcements. This coming Saturday, having a special outreach leading up to our friend day. So if you can be here at 10 o'clock Saturday morning, we're going to have different ways to go out into the community and be inviting people for our friend day. Um, I know usually friend day is our biggest day of the year. I know numbers are a little bit down because of COVID and things like that. You know, we all go through different seasons of the church family. We're really looking forward to next week. Hopefully you can bring some people with you. No matter how many people we have, we'll have a good time, hear some good preaching, eat some good food, and uh, have some great time of fellowship. But do your best to bring somebody with you next, uh, next Sunday for Friend Day. Now, so Friend Day schedule looks like this. We have Sunday school. All the adults will be meeting out here. Brother Davidson will be preaching. And we also have morning service. And then we have a meal right following after that. And then an afternoon service after that. That's probably somewhere around 1.30 or 1.45 is usually when the meal, the afternoon service is ready. And things leading up to that we need some help with. On Saturday, they're going to be doing some cooking out back, um, cooking the barbecue that's going to be there. So if you'd like to be a help with that, please see Mr. Bateman. He's leading that. Um, let him know that you'd be able to be there while they're cooking it or help chopping it up. And our menu for next Sunday is barbecue, fried chicken, green beans, macaroni and cheese, potato salad, and coleslaw. And we're asking for people to bring in desserts. So if you'd like to bring in dessert, please sign up at the Welcome Center. Please let us know what you're bringing so we can know how much we have in case we have to purchase more. And we're not asking you to bring in any of the main items. There will be a little canister there if you'd like to give a donation to help pay for the food. That's great. And then that starts off our revival on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That is next week at 7 p.m. Looking forward to that. Choir will be singing every night, special music each night, all those different things going on. Looking for a really, really great week. Brother Davidson does a great job preaching. I always look forward to hearing him. And he's one of, actually one of my favorite speakers. God's spoken to my heart many times while listening to him preach. So uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So come on out next week, all week long for the revival and also for our special friend day. Let's, uh, the other thing is ladies' conference, uh, November 12th and 13th. Let me encourage you to, all you ladies, to go out to that. For anyone that's 18 and above, it's at Deacon Baptist Church. It's in Raleigh. Um, we need you to sign up by the 27th. If you uh, are interested in going, please see my wife. I think it'll be a great time of fellowship. You get to hear a lot of great teaching from ladies and ladies' perspective. And I know some of the speakers there are people that uh, my wife enjoyed in the past. And I know Francie Taylor is something that many of you guys have enjoyed in the past. And also Beth Lee Young has been here and spoke to you ladies before and enjoyed it. And Sharon Raven the same way. They've been here before. You guys always have the blessing. So do your best to clear out your counters for that, ladies. Let's go ahead and have ushers come forward. Appreciate your faithfulness with your giving. And looking forward to how God's going to work and use the things that he gives us uh, through, through the giving here at Faith Baptist Church to reach the world. Brother Frank, will you pray for us?
Amen. For our favorite, uh, uh, we're going to have a scripture song secondly, Acts 1 8. But for our favorite, which is the first song we're going to sing, Ms. Uh, Trish wants us to sing number 146. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Verses 1 and 2. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. Okay, you got one more song. We're going to sing Acts 1-8. And if it's not up there, turn your Bibles to Acts 1-8. Same words. <laughs> if it comes up, then you got it. Oh, there we go. Thank you, guys in the back. But ye shall receive power. Acts 1-8. But ye shall receive power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me good singing tonight
Take your Bibles and turn to Exodus, please. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Somewhere in there. I love this time of the year. We went for a walk the other day and uh, went outside. And there was this wonderful aroma. Somebody had a fire going. <laughs> love this time of the year. It smells so good. Don't know where it's coming from, but I love that. little little campfire action. And uh, just smells so nice. Also like walking by steak restaurants. <laughs> Ever done that? That's not on accident, I'm pretty sure. Uh, even a place like Burger King. McDonald's, I don't know if I've ever had that. Um, if you like McDonald's, that's fine. I don't, whatever, I don't care. But I don't know if I've ever said, ooh, I just got to get a burger from McDonald's. But uh, Burger King, yeah. That flame broil, you come out here on Saturday, I'm sure you're going to get a little bit of that same as they're, as they're barbecuing. I'm sure it's going to smell amazing, right? Amazing. Uh, love that fragrance. Well, today I want to talk to you about a different fragrance. We're going to get into it. I'll tell you the title in a little bit. Uh, but Exodus chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 1 and read down a few verses, and then we'll, we'll pray and then get into it. Uh, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and, and the, uh, he led the flock to the backside of the desert, came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of, out of that land unto a good and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the, Egypt, the Egyptians press them. Now go back and look at chapter 2, um, verse 23. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of, of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. So what we find, and you're familiar with the story, I'm fairly certain, uh, we find Egypt is inhabited by Israel 400 years, right? 430 years, we, we learn in other places. Uh, and God is about ready to rescue His people. He's already set up a man, a deliverer, that He's going to use. He had that prepared 80 years ago, right? Uh, but it just comes to them now that they, they don't like where they are. They don't like the situation that they're in. Now, they've been in bondage for a long time. Remember, Moses is around 80 years old. Moses' life is set up into, into triplets. First 40 years, he was in Pharaoh's palace. The, then he kills the, the Egyptian, and then he runs for his life. The second 40 years, he's in the backside of the desert, leading, leading the Jethro's flock. And then the, the third 40 years, he's leading God's people. Right? So remember, all the boys were supposed, all the male children were supposed to be killed. But his mom feared God. Right? Praise the Lord for a mother who fears God. And she says, I don't care what you say. I fear God more than you. I'm going to raise my children. I'm not killing my child. I'm not going to let you kill my child. I'm giving him to the Lord. And she literally put him in God's hands. 
made, a, made a, a, an ark, sent them down a alligator, crocodile infested waters and said, okay, God, here you go. Let's see what you're going to do. And God delivered him. So for 80 years, Israel has been suffering oppression. And just now, and I don't know, it says in the process of time, they start crying out to God. God, save us. God, rescue us. God, help us. We don't like where we are. Today I want to talk to you about your prayers sure do smell good. Because greater than any barbecue or any campfire or any steakhouse or any of that, God says our prayers are a sweet-smelling savor to Him. And He loves it. But what happens with us sometimes, and this is what I want to look at today, is we wait and wait and wait to pray. You ever seen a bumper sticker? If all else fails, try Jesus. No, that's backwards. Go to Jesus first. Amen. And then you won't fail. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time. Lord, it's good to be in the house of God. It's good to have freedoms and liberties. Lord, we are we're, we're experiencing something in America that many, many people, Christians, throughout, uh, throughout history have not experienced, Lord. I'm very thankful for it, but we've taken it for granted. We've taken advantage of it, Lord. And in, in that, we've become complacent in many ways. And Father, I'm praying that you would wake us up tonight, that you would help us to see the situation that we're in, God, where we have allowed our own lives to be consumed with idolatry and apathy, Lord, and so many other things. Father, I'm asking that you would deliver us from ourselves, from our sin, Lord, that we might actually be a light to our nation. God, that we might actually see revival, but Lord, start that work in us here tonight. Lord, we have revival meetings coming up, but Lord, teach us now to pray. Encourage us to pray more, Lord, because it's a sweet-smelling savor to you. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm, I'm reminded of a song, and I, I couldn't get it out of my mind today. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue, right? I'm not going to sing the whole song for you, I, but I, I love that song, and it's convicting. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Or are we all too comfortable? I know I could get comfortable. We're enjoying life, and we have a lot of luxuries, especially here in America. We're a spoiled bunch. We truly, truly are. But when's the last time we said, God, we need you to do something great or else we're going to die? That's where Israel finally got. That's the point they finally got to where they started crying out to God in their affliction. God, you have to deliver us because if you don't deliver us, we're doomed. And yet our prayers are something like, oh, God, would you, would you maybe deliver us? Now, I'm going to come back to this verse later on, and you don't have to turn there. Many of you are very familiar with this verse as well. But James chapter 5 and verse 16 says this, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, we're going to come back and we're going to look at that righteous man part later. But think about that. The effectual, fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. When's the last time that we prayed fervently? And I'm reminded of a verse, um, I just have to find my verse uh, that I'm reminded of. Psalm 126, go ahead and turn there. We take prayer requests, obviously. And if, if you've ever spent any time listening to somebody pray over a prayer request list, especially if they don't know the people, it can get pretty mundane, right? Maybe it's just me. Bless so-and-so and help so-and-so and, and meet the needs of so-and-so. Hey, but when it's your mom or your dad or your loved one or your, your, your son or your daughter or your friend or whatever it is, your mortgage, then we're a little more fervent in our prayers. Yes, maybe it's just me. I was praying with somebody last week. I had all my kids, so I didn't get to go to prayer men's prayer meeting this week. 
But I listened to him pray over a prayer request sheet and with what power and, and the spirit by which he prayed over this list that most of us, that myself, would just kind of gloss through. I thought, wow. Psalm 126, verse 5, the Bible says this, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And I've said this before from this pulpit, and I've experienced in my own life, maybe our, our, our eyes are a little dry. Why aren't we seeing you work, God? Where's the deliverance, God? Our eyes are dry. There's no tears. There's no fervency. There's no, there's no heart calling out for God because we have nowhere else to turn but only to God. May God help us. By the way, he says in the next verse, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing, in, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. When's the last time we cried and prayed over our Sunday school class? Or our ministry? Those in our class? Our unsaved family? Our neighbors? I'm just saying, I think our eyes are a little dry. And I'm not for the, the weeping prophet. But our eyes are dry. Revelation chapter 5. And this is what got me thinking in this. This is a fantastic verse. Revelation chapter 5. And, and turn to verse 8 with me. And we're going to go kind of speedily through several verses here in just a minute. Um... And then we'll make some points at the end. See what time we have left. Revelation chapter 5, look at verse 8. Now, I'm not going to get into all the 24 elders in the book of Revelation, and, and I'm not going to do all that. That's not the point here tonight. Uh, you could study that out, write up a three to five page paper, double space, 12 point Times New Roman. Submit it. I'll give you a grade. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, even though that is... Fun stuff to look at. But look at verse 8. And when he had taken the book, uh, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And I just, I'm thinking that up in heaven, there's these 24 elders, right? And they've got these vials. Maybe they're small vials. I don't know what kind of vials they need. I'm liking to think that they're humongous vats, right? But they've got these vials, and they're full of the prayers of saints. So as the prayers of the saints are coming up, and, and you think about where they are right now, uh, they're in the tribulation period, right? And these people are, are in the next, next chapter. They're dying, and they're asking God, save us. And in the next chapter, chapter 6, God went... <laughs> Look at this. This is fun. I like this. Look at um, chapter 6. And verse something. Where is it? I didn't write it down because I wasn't going to go there. But it's fun. Oh, Look at verse 11. Oh, no, no. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? God, avenge us. God, they, they killed us. Right? They're, they're in heaven under the throne of God, crying out, God, when are you going to avenge us? And verse 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Right? They're over here crying out to God, God, they had their way with us on the earth. When are you going to set things right? Oh, just God. Oh, holy God. Oh, true God. He is merciful, but He's also just. He's forgiving but there's also a time for judgment. And they're crying out, God, when are we going to see that judgment? And he says, just wait a little bit. Wait. Just a little bit. Because there's still some more that need to die like you did. 
Now that boggles my mind, right? But in heaven, there's these vats. These, they're vials. And again, I'd like to think they're huge, right? But who knows? That our prayers are being put into. And I wanted to bring up here a table and just every once in a while, periodically drop a little think in there. Because every time a prayer of a saint comes up, think. Right? And I wonder if that's what it sounds like to God in heaven every once in a while. Think. I don't want that to be my prayer life. I want mine to be. <sighs> but more than that. But I don't have that kind of breath. Right? And your prayer life to not be. Think. But what if we, like, like Israel and Egypt there, finally got to the place where God, we. We can't go forward, and we can't go backwards, and we can't go to the side, and we can't go anywhere. God, you have to deliver us. And God says, okay, now I see your heart. Now I'm ready to deliver you. Take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 56. Psalm 56. We won't turn to all of these verses, but Psalm 56, verse 8. But our prayers sure do smell smell good to God. Psalm 56, verse 8. The Bible says this. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? God's keeping record. God's keeping record. Turn over to Psalm 141. Not too many... Psalms away. Psalm 141. We'll look at verse 2. And there's so many more verses that we can look at that we're not going to look at, but your prayers sure do smell good to God. Psalm 141, verse 2, the Bible says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Now, we're going to look here in just a little bit at the altar of incense, not in depth and not in detail, although that's a fantastic study. But that is the point. That was the point of the altar of incense. My house shall be called a house of prayer. And as that incense went up, it's a sweet-smelling savor to God, just like when we're walking outside and we smell that, ooh, somebody's got a fire going. Somebody's, somebody's grilling. Somebody's... Smoking some barbecue. God says, somebody's praying. Mm. And what fervency they're praying. That's a hot prayer right there. It smells good. And he's putting it into his bottle. Dink. Right? 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 5. Don't turn there. We'll, we'll go to another verse here in just a minute. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And all of this is the Levitical system is Jesus Christ, right? And much could be said about that. But he wants us to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Hebrews chapter 13, you don't have to turn there, verses 15 and 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. The sacrifice of praise to God, continually, that is, uh, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. We see other, other wonderful sacrifices in Philippians uh, four, 4 verse 18, but I have, all, I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were uh, sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Now, this is not prayer. This is a, a financial gift, but he's saying all the same. This is a sweet smell, a sacrifice. You're giving spirit. Hey, this is a sacrifice that God's pleased with. All right? But you know God wasn't always pleased with Israel's sacrifices? You know this. 
Take your Bible and turn it back to Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 7, the Bible says, and I'll read there in just a second. Exodus 30 and verse 7, and there's so much more in this chapter. But, and Aaron shall burn, in, shall burn there on sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamp, he shall burn incense upon it. And it goes on and it talks all about the incense and all of that, right? The burnt offerings and so on and so forth. God was pleased with the smell of the incense. In, in fact, he said, don't offer strange fire. And when they did offer strange fire, Nadab and Abihu, they got dead. Right? They died. Was it Nadab and Abihu? Yeah, they got dead. Right? Because they displeased the Lord and they're, they're offering strange fire. God says, hey, you're not going to go home and you're not going to make this. Uh, for yourselves and sell it in the market. This is, this is special. This is holy to me. And you better not offer anything else because this is what I want. But here's what happened. It just become mundane. Every day they go in, they do their business, then this, then this, and here's the bread, and now here, let me light the incense, and let me go on my way. And I pleased God. And God was not happy with any of that. So incense is our prayer. It's a picture of our prayers before God. But incense itself, that outward conformity, God despises. Just like when we show up, just because that's what we've always done. Just like when we are here in these pews and we sing the same old songs that we already sang so many times, we know the words, we don't even have to think. Is anybody else guilty of that? Like, I'm guilty of that? You don't have to confess. I'm confessing my faults to you. You don't have to do that. Sing, sing these songs I've been singing for 20 plus years and I know the words to it and just let them roll off my tongue without ever letting them affect my, my heart and my mind. Is God pleased with that? No. Take your Bible and turn to Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Not that that would help you if you didn't know what minor prophets are. Hosea chapter 6. Look at verse 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Turn over to Malachi. Actually, we'll go to Micah next. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Micah chapter 6. In verse 6. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers or oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? What can I do to earn God's favor? Nothing. Religion is us working our way to God. Christianity is working God working himself to us. Right? What can I do to earn his favor? Absolutely nothing. He's not interested in any of that. He's interested in us. He's interested in our hearts. Verse 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and, and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Turn over to Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1, verse 11 through 13. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. That must have hurt when they heard that. 
And in, e and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. They have not knowledge. I speak this to your shame. I can't remember the verse that is. It just came to my mind reading this. They have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Right? Here Israel had God. They had his word. And God said, you, you've messed up. You missed it. How many of us, 21st century American Christians, have just missed it? And we've just been going through the routine. Verse 12, but ye have profaned it, in that ye say, the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Verse 13, ye said also, behold, what a weariness it is. And ye have snuffed at it with the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But be cursed. But cursed be the deceiver which have hath in his flock a male, and he goes on. So you brought me whatever you wanted to, and you, you played religion however you felt like you should, and, and that's me. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Well, I'm kind of content. I'm kind of comfortable. I kind of like my lifestyle. When are, when are we going to get like Israel? God, I have nowhere else to turn but to you. I have nowhere, no one else I'd rather draw near to, God, than you. There's no better joy that I have in this world, Lord God, than, than you. Or are we just all too okay with coming to church, giving God our time, checking it off, and going about our week? Good question, I guess. So here's what I want to leave us with. Three things. And you guys know these. Number one, let's pray with an importunity. Now, I like imprecatory prayers. I would have loved to have this in my outline. You guys know what imprecatory prayers are? They're prayers of judgment. I like those. But that's not part of my outline today. That was free. Pray with importunity. What does that mean? Remember the guy? We're going to turn there in here in just a second. Luke chapter 11. You can turn there. It's late. Go away. But I need bread. I'm in bed with my kids. Go away. But I need bread. Please come to the door. I need some bread. Go away. You bother me. I don't even like you. You're a bad neighbor. I gave you my chainsaw yesterday. Didn't get it back. Come on, man. I need some bread. Right? I don't know if that, that's in the Greek, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what is importunity? Never quit. Never quit. Keep dropping those, those, what are, those prayers into that vial. Keep dropping them in. And drop them in by the truckload. Just keep on praying. And don't quit praying. I'm convinced that I got saved because my grandma, an older lady, just kept on praying. Right? I have no, why, why would God ask, not ask me, but invite me to receive Christ so many times? So many times I heard that nudging in my heart, you need to get saved. And I pushed it away, you need to get saved. Why did God give me so many opportunities? And some people don't even get one. I'm convinced it's the prayers of my grandma, the prayers of my mom. Come to church, Joe. I was talking with a young man the other day. And uh, invited him out to church, and um, we'll see. He says, I go to church with my mom. She asked me to go. I was like, man, that's, that's amazing. You know? Because uh, that's what my mom did with me. Hey, Joe, come to church with me. Come to church with me. No, nah, Ma. Uh, that, that's, that's no. Come to church with me, Joe. All right, fine. But I, I was in the club all night. I couldn't go to church with her. You know, I couldn't. But I did sometimes. Come to church with me, Joe. You know what she's doing? Give me some bread. 
I need some bread. She never quit. I'm convinced my grandma never quit in glory now. Why would God be so gracious to me, a sinner who refused him so many times? Prayer works. Prayer works. Importunity. Never quit. Never quit asking. Luke chapter 11. You're probably already there. Look at verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and, and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and, and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. I'm so sick and tired of you asking me. I'm going to finally give you what you want. Now, by the way, there, there's a caveat to this. God says, you keep asking me for the things that, that you don't need and I don't want you to have. I might give them to you and send leanness into your soul. Not everything that we want, we need. Right? So if God says, and if it, obviously his word says, that's wrong. Let's not ask for those things. Right? But if God tells us, hey, be content, or my grace is sufficient for thee, or don't speak of this to me anymore, as he's done in the scriptures, let it go. God knows what's best. Right? But otherwise, unless God shuts you down, right now, we have a church member who's visiting their family because of COVID. And I bet they're praying real good. Right? And the Lord knows his answers. And the Lord's will is perfect. But don't ever stop until God gives his answer. Never quit. We used to say it like this. I used to work at the Four Seasons in, in Washington, D.C., Georgetown. Pretty prestigious hotel. And it, there was valets, which I was a manager or supervisor of the valet. And there was doormen. And we used to say about the doormen because they could keep the cars. Now, every day we had Ferraris and Lamborghinis and just whatever. You know, the top of the top of all cars, right? Uh, Bugattis, every day. And the doormen liked those guys because they obviously have money. <laughs> so he would keep their cars right up front, you know. And they like that anyways. Shows off their, their expensive car. It, it touches their pride a little bit. But we said, man, when the doormen are just scooping up all the cars, not giving anything to the valets, we say, man, he's hungry. What is he doing? He's hustling. He's trying to get as much money as he can from these people so that he can take some, home some bread to his family. He's hungry. Right? That's what we used to say about him. Are you hungry? Do you need some bread? Or are we, uh, can I borrow some bread? No? Okay, bye, thanks. I'll bring your chainsaw later. Right? When's the last time we stayed there? Oh, God. God, you can tell me to go away, but until you do, I'm not leaving. Importunity. So pray with importunity. Never quit. Never quit. Number two, pray with faith. Matthew chapter 11. And by this, only he can. Only he can. Matthew chapter 11. This verse was just really impressed on my heart, the, this passage. Verse 28. You guys know this verse, I'm sure. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, or upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And I don't even necessarily know if this is a prayer verse. But all I know is every single one of us in here have burdens that we're carrying, like a heavy backpack. And it gets tiresome, and it gets cumbersome. And, and sometimes you got to just bring that thing. Every day, really, 
We just got to bring that thing here to the feet of Jesus and say, God, I'm struggling with bitterness. God, I'm struggling with this sin. God, I'm, I'm struggling with my co-workers. God, I'm struggling with whatever it is. God, I don't like this situation that you've allowed me to be, and I know your will is perfect. And you bring that thing to the feet of Jesus. You bring it to the altar. You bring it to the cross, and you take that backpack of weight off, and you leave it there in faith. God, here it is. I'm struggling. My joy, it's gone. In fact, what is joy? I don't know. I don't think I've ever had it. And I want it. Right? But they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And it may be that we just need to spend some time at the altar, at the feet of Jesus, saying, God, this is where I am. And I know you're the only one that can help me from where I am. God, I've got this sorrow, and I've got this brokenness, or I've got this sin, or I've got this child, or whatever it is, and leave it there. Because here's what we do. Here's what teenagers do. I talk to them about this. Kids, we put those things on, and we just carry it around. And it dra drains us and zaps us of all of our joy as Christians. Man. Man. Leave those burdens right there. Come to the Lord and let Him have it, knowing by faith He can. Fairly simple, I think. Number three, pray with purity. James chapter 5, if you want to turn there, and then we'll be done here in just a minute. Pray with purity. Be clean. We already read the verse, but we'll read it again. James chapter 5. In verse 16, while you're turning there, James chapter 4 talks about prayer as well, drawing near to God. And he says in verse 2 of chapter 4, Ye lust and ye have not, ye kill and ye desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. We're trying to do things ourselves, God. We're trying to, God, I'm trying to help you out here. Don't you understand that, God? I'm trying to work this out to both of our advantage. God, if you just let me do this, then I, I, I promise you that I will tithe more or it'll be a blessing to the church. We're trying to work it out in our, in our own power. God doesn't, he's not pleased with that. Verse 3, chapter 4, Ye ask and receive not. So those that did not ask, they're condemned because they're trying to do it themselves. But then there's also those that ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. They're selfish. He calls them here adulterers and adulteresses. You only want what pleases you. You don't want the things. I'm not condemning you. This is what the Bible says for us, right? We want what we want, not what God wants. Now, James chapter 5 and verse 16 Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Two years ago, I was at a revival, a prayer revival, and it literally changed my life. Now, I don't know if he did this in the meeting, but he definitely gave the idea where bring a trash can down front. What's your sin? Bring it in. Bring it in. Here's the trash can. What's the sin that's got you away from God right now? Bring it in. Is it your DVDs? Come and throw them in. Get rid of them. Is it your TV? Come and throw it in. By the way, have you ever noticed that large families don't watch a lot of TV? I don't know what the connection is with that, um, but it's all over uh, homeschool sites. And homeschool, anyways, I digress. I'm sorry. What is it? Bring it in. And so whether he had a trash can there or not, I, I don't remember at this time. But what an idea. Hey, God, this, this sin, it's got me. And I got to get rid of this thing. So I'm going to make a decision. I'm not just going to ask you to help me. I'm going to get rid of this thing. And I'm going to bring it into the altar, literally, and throw it away. 
twice in my life. I know I've mentioned this to the teens. I've had to throw away my CD collection. Twice. I've had to take my carnal, worldly CDs. We don't use those anymore, right? And throw them in a trash can. Exxon at Silver Star and Clark in Ocoee, Florida. I remember exactly where I was. Because I said, God, I'm tired. Well, the first time, I'm tired of this. It's got a hold on my life. And I want to be right. So here, here's the question. Do we want to be clean? Or do we want to be cleaner? Now, I'm not going to say who in my family this is. And I'm not even going to look back to where my family is. But we have certain individuals, let's say it that way, who will take a shower but forget to wash their feet. And man, the hair is, sometimes I, for, I think they forget to do their hair too. Sometimes I even question, were you even in the water? Did you use water? Like, anyways. But they'll come down and we'll do devotions or whatever it is. Did you shower? Oh yeah, I showered. I think you might need to do that again. With a little more fervency. There's a lot to be said for being cleaner. I don't want to be cleaner. I want to be clean. When God looks at me, I don't want him to smell my stinking feet. Right? Because it's, it's obvious to everybody else that your feet stink. And it's obvious to everybody else that our spiritual walk stinks. Right? I smell fine, but everybody else knows. Right? But I'm so very thankful that as we offer up prayers to God, think, number one, He's keeping track of it. And, and one day, I think, when He starts to pour out that judgment, when God starts to turn things around and, and judgment day has come, aye, right, boys, turn them out. I don't know. Wouldn't that be something? If all the prayers of the saints from all of history just get poured out at once and come into God's ears and it's judgment time. Right? But you, you're important. Your walk with Christ is important. As important as pastors, as important as anybody else's. Your prayer life matters. And God's looking for, think, from every single one of us. Every single one of us. Your prayers sure do smell good to God. So let's pray. Importunity, never quit. With faith, because He can. And with purity. Let's be clean. Father, thank You for our time here today. God, thank You for church. And Lord, I confess, I could treat it as a task to be performed. But Lord, what we are really looking for is your presence and your power, your spirit to move in our hearts and our lives. Like one time, for sure, we know you did when you called us to salvation. God, we know we heard the voice of God speaking to us and talking to us, convicting us and moving us. God, would you, would you move in our, our services like that? here tonight. God, would you revive us, a people that are all too comfortable and content. God, would you move us? Father, we we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would stand, head bowed, eyes closed. Miss Kathy is on the piano.